on chores. Let's do them together. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, hello, I'm Rose, my pronouns are she, her. Today I have a lot of chores to do, including repotting a lot of anthurium and alocasia. So grab a drink, or if you have plenty chores to do, grab them and let's do them together. Hello, Rose from the future here. I just wanted to pop in and explain I'm going to be adding updates on the update that is coming up because I filmed this on the 8th of May, which is now like more than two weeks ago, and the plants have grown so much. Also, this video is kindly sponsored by Soil Ninja. A little bit more about them later. But first, I want to show you a few of the plants, like this Anthurium King of Spades which I got as a very, very small plant a few months ago. And look at this fuzzy root here. I don't know if it wants to focus on it, but it is delicious. It is a little bit too big for my terrarium, so I thought I will repot it again because there's a bunch of roots everywhere. And then I will try and grow it in the living room maybe for summer. We're also gonna move the box that I've had here, this huge box in the windowsill, which it doesn't look very nice. So my boyfriend made a space for it upstairs that it's a little bit less visible. This is my Reggie the Regal. I love Anthurium, but they can, these can be quite tricky. But look here, there is a new point. Can it focus on it? Not really, because it's in the wrong setting. But there's a new point. Anyway, the Regal hasn't grown much yet. There's just a new point that still looks pretty much the same, but he's beautiful. Another plant that lives in that box is this one. This is my big Melanochrysum, which I absolutely love, but also I don't really enjoy growing them as house plants, if you don't know. These are really tricky to grow and especially to size them up and make them look beautiful. This new leaf came out, so I'm happy with that. But as you can see, it's still much smaller than the previous ones. It took a really long time. I don't know, this used to be my favorite plant ever and I still love it in botanical gardens, but I'm not quite sure if I wanna <laughs> grow it myself anymore, if that makes sense. Melano is looking good. The leaf actually got quite a lot bigger and it's still brown, so I'm impressed. I thought it was a lot smaller and it was gonna stay that way. And the new point is also growing fast. It's actually above the moss pole now. <laughs> So I need another extension, but that does not fit in the box. So stay down, please. Thank you. And the last plant in that box is this queen that I have on a moss pole, which I didn't know they liked, but they actually love it. There's so many roots growing upwards into the pole. You can see them all over here, reaching the top even, coming out the top here. Fuzzy, fuzzy roots. And the stem is just um, up to here. So it really enjoys growing on a pole and it has a new leaf in between here. Look at that. I'm very curious to see how big this will get. I'm gonna actually move them into our new bathroom. In September, we're having a home renovation happening because our house is really old and needs, literally the second floor is kind of collapsing in towards our front window. So we need that stabilized. We want the windows to be insulated. So double pane instead of the single pane that we have in the back of the house. And then if there's money at the end of it, we're also gonna renovate our bathroom, make it warm because it gets to six degrees in winter when it's freezing, which is very cold, like 40 degrees Fahrenheit maybe. I don't know, too cold for our comfort. So we're gonna insulate that, put new tile. We're gonna hopefully make it super cool and planty. And then these guys will get to live in there because it will be warm finally and humid enough and with lots of windows, of course. The queen leaf is the most exciting update because look, wow. Can I get it on the screen even? Still floppy and bigger than the previous leaf. So this was the last one. This is the new one. Look at that. Oh, the sinuses are very close. They're even overlapping here. And it is perfect. It is living in that box, which means there is nothing that could harm it. And that's probably why it looks so perfect. It is a little bit bleached maybe because it is sitting right in my north facing window right now, could probably pull back a little bit. And I might even start to grow this in the living room at some point because the other one had so much success. Here's the roots, by the way, coming out the top and growing all over. I love it. Root porn, let's get going. This is where the box lives now. It looks pretty good. 
I did put something underneath, a little old pencil case, so that it is a bit more even. Look who is here. Hello? Hi. Maxer loves it in the windowsill here. Hey, my knuppert. Hi. Oh. Let me quickly show you an update of the plants above the bed as well. Because there is some new growth, finally, on this Hoya. Look at that new leaf. This is Hoya fungi. Hoya fungi has a lot of new leaves and growth points. It's exploding. I love it. Hoya linearis also has some buds. Of course, I can't find them right now. Normally, it's a winter bloomer. So it's interesting that it's budding up now. The succulenties are also growing. Looking nice. These were fresh cuttings I took and look all the side shoots are coming. It looks very sad but this is a very fast grower so I'm sure it will be okay. This one as well. Look at that. All the new growth. So shiny too. So pretty. I love it. And then the Hoya Gunungading which has been flowering a lot. This is like the third time it's almost about to flower very bright sorry and it's very bright because of my amazing grow lights by Soltec. you can use my code plant with rose or the link in the description for a discount this is not sponsored by the way i am an affiliate with them this guy just keeps flowering it's now about to flower here the other flowers have dropped but are already budding up again so it's amazing another fun one here is the caspar the florida ghost it's making a new leaf that's really creamy. Look at that nice minty on this leaf as well. So that's growing well. Florida Ghost seems to be sizing up. Look at that, very nice leaf. And then this Anthurium is working on new growth. And I think it's also making a flower here, which I don't want. So, sorry, we're gonna break that off. I want it to focus on the leaves. And the next leaf is on the way. This is the velvet mask that was just coming out when I filmed the beginning. Look at it! I love Anthurium! The begonia box looks great, but there's not a lot of growth happening in it yet. There's some incredible leaves though and patterns. I love terrarium begonias. Oh, and lastly, this is my Anthurium magnificum that has had a disease on the leaves. With a little bit more light, you can see it. I think there is a virus or something in it. It was also on the new leaf. It's now working on another new leaf and I'm very curious to see if it has it or not. If so, I'm gonna throw it out. If not, it gets to stay. Bad news on this one. It is definitely showing signs of that virus. So I'm wondering if I should actually throw it away, which feels bad because it's a beautiful plant, or if I should do something else. I, I'm kind of leaning towards throwing away. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you. I'm gonna be using the Soils by Soil Ninja. I've been testing out the Soil Ninja products for several months now. I really love their products, their small business, and their focus on sustainability and creating soil that actually makes your plants happy. It is a UK company that actually moved to Europe as well recently. So they now actually have a warehouse in the city that I was born in, Zwolle, quite funny. And that means that they can ship to all over Europe without any issues, no import costs anymore. This is the Anthurium and Orchid mix, and this is their Semi-Hydro mix. I'm actually moving most of my Alocasia to Semi-Hydro because they are struggling, and I think it will be a little bit more stable in Semi-Hydro. I'm gonna add in some worm castings in the soil because worm castings is a very good way to fertilize. And I have some moss. <coughs> Oh, while I'm here, by the way, we are in my greenhouse right now. An example of the tiles that we have in our house right now. And we might also use these in our new bathroom. Can you imagine it? A wall of these as a background with a bunch of plants in it. Maybe a little bit darker. We love anything turquoisey. So just wanted to show you that. Now let's get the plants. This is the only reason why I don't like repotting and doing plant work in the greenhouse. I have to move all the plants. Look who came to say hello, but is more interested in his dad right now. Mwah, Mickey! <laughs> Let's start with some of the easier ones, like this little Anthurium that definitely is in too big a pot right now. It's struggled a little bit, so we're gonna put it in a smaller pot. It is growing new roots and leaves, so it is gonna be okay, I think, but... Look how cute! I'm curious if you like these plant ASMR sounds or if you prefer me to do a voiceover for all the quiet bits. Let me know! Actually, this Affinity Bessier hybrid 
it needs a bigger pot. So I think I'm gonna switch pots for them. Let's see if we can keep the roots in one piece as I pull it out. Yep, yep, keep going. You can do it. So this can go in here. This can go in here. These are two Bessier hybrid plants that look a lot nicer actually because they were in a better light situation. But there's two in a very shallow pot. So I'm gonna make this in a deeper pot. This one is also really root bound. This is one that I got from a friend, a hybrid, weirdo hybrid. This was very small when I got this, so I'm very impressed with how much it has grown. A bunch of roots here. I'm just trying to get some of the moss off because that feels too wet for how big it's getting. And that can cause rot in the roots, root rot. Much bigger, much better. I might reuse some of this soil for some of the smaller ones. Oh, this is making a new leaf, very cute. Label. All the species of Infinity Bessier are looking nice, especially the ones that are a little bit darker. No new growth on them yet. I can't wait to see what they turn into once they get a little bit bigger. I'm just making a mix of the Anthurium mix and worm castings. If you are interested in trying these products out for yourself, you can use my code PLANTWITHROSE or the link in the description to get a discount. And that also helps me because I'm an affiliate with them. The Forgetti has definitely perked up a little bit more. I'm confused as to why it turned into a split sinus again. But other than that, it looks pretty happy. So hopefully it's gonna grow back into forgetty leaves with the closed sinus, you know, at the top. I potted this quite deep into the pot because I feel like how it's been growing is quite long internodal spacing and it's been quite quick. So I think a little bit deeper is gonna help it to live in this pot a little bit longer. Now with this one, I'm really impressed. Since repotting, it's grown a new leaf. This was the last leaf it grew. And this is the new one. Look at that size increase. I also love the shape. It's a little bit different than many of my plants at least. So very happy and impressed with this little plant. I knew it needed some more space to grow. Last anthurium that we have here. These are seedlings of anthurium vici that are growing well and quickly, so we're gonna separate them. What shall we pot them in? I think I'm gonna unpot the other anthurium first, and then we will have some reusable soil, because I don't wanna have my seedlings in the super dry anthurium soil. They need a little bit more water. This is the big one. This is the king of spades with all the roots everywhere. Eh. I don't want to put it down because I'm going to break the bottom roots. Let me take the moss off first. <laughs> that stem has gotten so fat. I love it. Whoa. It's so root bound. Look at this. And it's already so big. This is actually in that same anthurium mix from Soil Ninja. I repotted it a while ago, not that long ago actually, so it's been growing really fast. I'm breaking all the rules when we get together. Anything at all, are you ready to do? What a cool plant to grow. Let's see, do I have a pot for this? It's a little bit bigger, but not too much bigger. Breaking all the rules when we get <laughs> There's big holes at the bottom though. Hmm. I did also give this the worm castings, so maybe that's why it's so big already. Maybe we should use more worm castings for everyone. Folding that root inside carefully. It's really surprisingly easy to use a pre-mixed soil when you're used to mixing your own. Okay, this moss back around the base. You just take bits, put it around the base to stimulate uh, aerial root growth. 
and then also to guide the aerial roots down into the soil to become actual roots. So they stay nice and fuzzy. Look at that. What a beauty. I wonder how big it's gonna grow now that it has a bigger pot. And that new point now looks like this. Check it out. It is so pretty. It's gonna be hopefully quite big. The petiole is just as big as this other leaf, so I can't wait to see it grow. And this is growing in the living room right now, so regular humidity. So I'm very impressed with how it looks. Taking all the rooms when we get together. <laughs> Can you tell this song was stuck in my head? Time to pot up the Anthurium Vici seedlings. I potted them up together in this shallow pot, reusing that. And I put some moss around the base as well to help with the humidity. The Vici seedlings have adjusted really well to their repot. They're actually growing new leaves as well. Look at these guys. They're all standing up nice and straight. I'm very curious to see what these will turn into because of course they're gonna be quite long and ribby. They are not yet, but that's always the case with seedlings. Hello, you want some attention? The next step is my alocasia, because most of them are pretty sad right now, as you can see. Here's a browning leaf. This is normal, but in general, they just look a little bit weird. And they are all growing in soil that looks a little bit clumpy, a little bit dry, but also, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like the right soil for me. So we're gonna unpot them, see what the roots are like, and then hopefully pot them in semi-hydro. This is the only Soil Ninja Aeroid mix that I have left, or Anthurium and Orchid mix. I'm putting it back in the bag. This is Alocasia Dragon Scale, by the way. Oh, does not feel good. I think it has root rot. Hmm. No. Why? Alocasia Dragon Scale does not like me. Two good roots. That's why it looked so sad. A lot of bad roots. Watsoniana is next. Hmm. Again. Bad. 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 Hmm. There's a few roots that are alive, but not many. No corms either. Hmm take off these two shorter parts and then it can be a little bit lower in the pot. Ew. I think I'm gonna combine the two Watsonianas because I have two here. Oh, and if you're wondering what these baggies are, I work with good bugs and these are the predatory mites against thrips and probably spider mites. Yeah, spider mites, these specific ones. Let's see, oh, did you see that? Zero contact with the roots. Okay, that's bad. Dead leaf can go. No, zero roots. I wonder if when they go dormant, if they also dormant the roots and this is normal, cause this does look like it's growing. Okay, so far very bad, everything. Let's see, the last one is my yellow variegated Elocasia Friedeck or Mycolisiana Mexkowski Aurea Variegata. That one's better. Okay, one out of four. Good job, Frida. Some corms here that people would pay a shit ton of money for, but you never know if they're actually gonna be variegated or not. Credit makes a lot of corms, apparently. Okay, now that's a nice root system. Good job, Friedek. Look how beautiful. Since I'm moving these to semi-hydro, it's best to really properly clean the roots because any leftover soil can create some rotting apparently. So that's what I'm doing here using our amazing Gardena system to spray all the soil away. Semi-hydro. Dragon scale doesn't have a lot of roots, just these two. So I'm gonna pot it in a very small pot. I'm gonna borrow a pot from an event I'm gonna be doing. I hope that person doesn't mind. Nice! Dragon scale isn't much of an update, but it's not dead yet, and there seems to be a new growth point here. Old the Watsoniana. Can you even see what I'm doing? 
Probably not. This is the Watsoniana now. It kind of looks a little bit sad, but if you look up close, you see all the new points. It seems it has adjusted really well. All the little plants, there's a lot of them, <laughs> seem to be growing new leaves. So that's definitely a success with moving to semi-hydro. One that I kind of forgot about, but I also moved to semi-hydro is my Alocasia Jacqueline, one of my favorite Alocasia, but it is so difficult to grow. I've really struggled. I've already killed two huge ones of this. So now I have a baby one living in the big terrarium and this one, because I just love it. I want to keep trying. Beautiful pot also, by the way, by Natalie from Piece of Clay. This has been dropping a few of the older leaves. They have mushy browned and died, but it is also growing new leaves. So fingers crossed for this one. Last one. I found one that I don't know what it is or where. Oh, I think it's a fry deck that we didn't plant. No, it. this is fry deck. Okay, everything is good. No worries. Mm. Maggie! Yeah! You need a bigger pot. No, it's falling right through. The holes are too big on this one. My boyfriend had some root fabric. What do you call it? Perfect. Perfect. Check out the fry deck. It doesn't have many leaves left except this beautiful one, but it looks like there is a new leaf growing right there. So I am excited to see. So far, so good with moving to semi-hydro. The corms I'm gonna soak and put in water and then see how they do. Since I ran out of Soil in your soil. I'm gonna make my own mix again, which I do with ingredients from Pocon. I really like their organic soil mix. Bark and perlite. I was actually really impressed with the worm castings, but I'm gonna pop this in my own mix as well. Let's move on to the Hoya and actually some succulents as well that I've been Rooting in water, look at these. Nice roots on there and new growth as well. So cute. Okay, so these are gonna go in their own little pot. The other one in there is Hoya obovata, my Ollie. Look at the roots here. My big plant has been struggling for a long time. Actually, these roots are rotted, so I'm pulling them off. But I think the bottom ones are great. Just a little bit full of algae. So anyway, the main plant was not growing well. It just made flowers, but didn't grow any new leaves for a long time. So I took some fresh cuttings. So this I'm gonna put in maybe also semi-hydro. I like Hoya in semi-hydro. All right. Hoya obovata is actually showing two growth points. One in the center there and then one on this side as well. So that is amazing. I'm excited to hopefully get a healthy, happy obovata again. The other two can go in soil. One plant that I didn't repot, but that I did want to show you because it has grown an incredible leaf, I'll show you in a second, is my Anthurium crystallinum. I grew this from a tiny seedling that I got in 2020. And this is the new leaf. It's kind of hard to show you how big it is and it's still growing because it's just crazy. Look at this, it's still floppy. And in the botanical gardens where the seeds came from, this actually has leaves a little bit bigger even than this, but it's now almost at the size of the botanical gardens. And here it lives quite far away from the window in regular humidity. So I'm so confused but also so happy and in love with this little baby. How pretty is that? We're also gonna pot up this Hoya Carry that I showed in last week's Hoya haul video. If you haven't seen that yet, you can check it. I will link it. It is such a cool Hoya, like I said in that video too. It's the only one that looks kind of velvety and anthurium-y and it has rooted really well. So I'm gonna pot this up, I think into soil, a little pot somewhere, maybe this one, because it's quite long. This does not have holes at the bottom, but usually that's okay for Hoya for me. And I use the same mix for aeroids and Hoya and stuff. So it's all the same. Stick this in. I had my rooting hormone ready, but I don't think it needs it. 
but a happy little plant. Ta-da! There we go. Hoya Carey is actually showing a bunch of roots down here. Really nice. And also a growth point. It's kind of hard to see because it's so small. Right next to the stem, there's a tiny little point and it is adorable. I think we can also pot up this Hoya Svetlana, which is amazing and already starting to grow here. And it has some roots at the bottom. All right. I already showed you the growth point on the Svetlana that is growing nicely, but she has also made a second growth point in the armpit there of the leaf. Can you see it? So two growth points, very happy about that. I have one more plant to pot up that is very, very exciting. And it is my Monstera Deliciosa Aurea variegata, the yellow variegated Monstera. Look at this beauty. It has been rooting in water and as you can see, it's been going well. Roots are growing out the pot here. So we're gonna put this up and I'm gonna give it a moss pot as well because I want the leaves to size up. So we're gonna make a moss pot together as well. If you're ever wondering how to make a moss pot or how I make a moss pot or where I find all this stuff, I actually get them from moss poles on Instagram, Simon. They provide basically ready-made flat packs for these. So you can buy, this is the bigger size. You can buy whichever size you prefer and just put them together yourself. All you need to add is moss. All right, so that is the moss pole done. Now let's check the plant, because I did notice that some of the roots, see this, are not so happy. Unfortunately, that happens when you are importing. Some of the roots don't like that, so we're gonna chop them off. I usually like to check where it starts to be rotted, which is here, and here, and here. Ugh. Just mush. But as you can see, a lot of new roots are growing. Wait, let me just get the last bits. So lots of white bits here and along the stem as well. So that's why I think it's gonna like the moss pole. I'm just gonna attach this and hope they grow inside the moss pole. The way that this plant is growing, it does mean that I probably have to put it quite low in the soil because I want it as deep as possible in the soil, of course. And that might mean that some of the nice leaves like this one will rot off because they are below the soil line. So let's just take a moment <laughs> to appreciate them in case they don't make it. Wow. And then from here, it should be fine because they are above the soil. And this is the latest one that was actually unfurling when I got it in the mail. And it looks amazing, it's doing really well. Now let's find a pot that is suitable. This is kind of the right size pot, but I want it a little bit deeper. So I might grab one of my longer pots. I don't like to use these very often because they fall out of my hands because they don't fit in any nice outer pots that I have but they are really handy because look how deep it can go inside almost all the roots will be underneath the soil line and then the rest can start to grow into the moss which is ideal so I am going to use it this time I get them from orchids and I do recommend this shop as well orchids.nl you see how much difference that makes for how low it can go but they, like I said, there are not really nice pots that fit this. So either the pot is too wide or it, there's a whole plastic bit coming out the top, which is also not super nice. I need to angle it a little bit better so it... Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing, can you? I did not change the camera. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I put it in the pot. It's along the moss pole. Now I'm just trying to add some more soil on one side because it's a bit angled too one side, which we do not want. Also, the two aerial roots here, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll bend them to go into the pot. This risks breaking, but so far, so good. This way, they will also root into the soil. Okay, it is on a pole in a pot. Fingers crossed, hopefully. It's gonna be happy on here. Yay! The Monstera Aurea 
is not showing any new signs of growth, but it's also not having any of the leaves brown and die. So it's just steady right now, which is good after a big repot. I'm hoping it's gonna settle in first with the roots, which often happens after you repot. Ugh, I have itchy face. <laughs> which often happens after you repot, nothing happens for a while as the plant is working below the soil. And then once it's settled, then it starts to shoot up. So fingers crossed for this beautiful little baby. I think that was the last plant. So I'm gonna water all of them inside, put them back in their spots and leave you to it because this is probably already a pretty long video. If you did chores with me, I hope they went well. I hope you feel a little bit more satisfied slash relaxed. If you just watched, that's awesome too. I wish I could just watch sometimes. <laughs> thank you so much for being here with me. A big thank you to Soil Ninja as well for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can use my code PLANTWITHROSE for a discount. I personally love their products and I'm excited to hear what you guys think of it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe below if you haven't already, and I will see you next week in another video. Bye friends.